The evening started like any other. I stood in my kitchen, the warm glow of the overhead lights casting shadows on the walls. I was preparing dinner, the comforting aroma of garlic and herbs filling the air. But tonight, instead of the usual quiet, I had company. Jake, Mark's son, was there to help with some renovations around the house. His presence changed everything. Do you need a hand with that? Jake asked, leaning against the counter, his eyes sparkling with mischief. I smiled, trying to keep it casual. I think I've got it, but thanks anyway. We chatted about everything and nothing. What he was studying, how his dad was handling the renovations at the office, the latest movies. I felt the tension in the air shift as we traded stories and laughter. He was charming, with a way of looking at me that made my heart race. At one point, he leaned closer, pointing at the chopping board. You really should try adding a bit of lemon zest next time. It makes everything pop. His voice was low, and I could smell the faint hint of cologne mixed with the sawdust from his work. Really? I'll keep that in mind, I replied, trying to focus on my task, but I couldn't ignore the heat rising in my cheeks. As the conversation flowed, I noticed how our words danced around unspoken feelings. There was a moment when our eyes locked, and I felt a spark, a connection that sent a jolt through me. My mind raced. Was I really feeling this way? This was wrong. Jake was not just Mark's son. He was the embodiment of temptation, and I was on the edge of a dangerous cliff. Clara, can I ask you something? He broke the tension, and I held my breath. Sure. Do you think we ever really know what we want? The question hung in the air, thick with meaning. I could feel my heart pounding in my chest. I guess it depends on what you're willing to risk, I answered, my voice barely above a whisper. Jake stepped closer, and I felt a rush of emotions flooding over me. Every logical thought I had flew out the window. I grappled with my attraction to him, feeling something deep within me awaken. It was thrilling and terrifying at the same time. Sometimes, it feels like we're just waiting for something to happen, doesn't it? He said, his gaze steady on mine. I swallowed hard, aware that every word we exchanged was drawing us closer to a line that shouldn't be crossed. Yeah, sometimes. Then, in a moment of reckless abandon, I made a choice. I took a step forward, closing the distance between us. I could feel the warmth radiating off him, and before I knew it, my lips brushed against his in a soft, fleeting kiss. The world around us seemed to vanish. What had I just done? I pulled back, panic flooding my senses as I searched his eyes for regret. Instead, I found longing mirrored in his gaze. Clara, he breathed, his voice low and filled with surprise. I, I shouldn't have done that, I stammered, my heart racing. Maybe not, but it felt right in the moment, he replied, stepping back as if the air between us had suddenly become charged. My head spun with guilt and desire, the weight of my actions crashing down on me. I had crossed a line, and now there was no turning back. As I stood there, the reality of my impulsive act settled in, leaving a bitter taste in my mouth. What would this mean for my marriage? For my family? I forced a smile, trying to mask the turmoil within me. Let's just forget this happened, okay? But the unspoken desires lingered in the air, a silent promise of what could be. I couldn't shake the feeling that this was just the beginning, and I was standing on the edge of something far darker than I could ever have imagined. The morning light spilled into my kitchen, warm and bright, but I felt anything but. The events of the previous evening played over and over in my mind, like a broken record. I poured a cup of coffee, the rich aroma filling the air, but it did little to settle the storm inside me. Guilt wrapped around my heart, squeezing tighter every time I pictured Jake's face those piercing blue eyes that seemed to see right through me. Clara, are you okay? Mark's voice broke through my thoughts,
pulling me back to reality. He stood in the doorway, his brow furrowed with concern. Yeah, just a little tired, I replied, forcing a smile that felt like a mask. I didn't sleep well. Mark nodded, though I could see his worry lingering. You've been distant lately. Is there something on your mind? I shook my head, the words stuck in my throat. I could not tell him the truth. The thought of confessing my feelings for Jake felt like standing on the edge of a cliff, ready to jump into the unknown. No, really, just... Work has been hectic. He sighed, his shoulders dropping slightly. I understand. Just remember... I'm here if you need to talk. Thanks, Mark. I turned back to the coffee maker, hoping he would let it go. But the tension in the air hung heavy, like a storm cloud ready to burst. I felt trapped in my own home, suffocated by the weight of my choices. As the day wore on, I tried to focus on the mundane tasks of being a wife and mother. I helped our daughter with her homework, but my mind wandered. I couldn't shake the image of Jake's smile, the way he had looked at me with a mix of admiration and something else, something dangerous. It felt like a betrayal to even think of him while I was with Mark. That evening, as we sat down for dinner, the silence was loud and uncomfortable. Mark tried to make small talk, but I could tell he was struggling. How was your day? He asked, glancing at me with hope. It was fine. I replied, pushing my food around my plate. Just the usual. He nodded, but I could see the disappointment in his eyes. The more I withdrew, the more he tried to reach out. Yet every time he came closer, I felt myself pulling away, like I was caught in a tug of war between my heart and my mind. After dinner, I escaped to the living room, hoping to find solace in a book. But the words on the page blurred, as my thoughts drifted again to Jake. The way he had leaned in, the way his hand brushed against mine, everything felt electric. I shook my head, trying to clear the thoughts, but they clung to me like a shadow. Clara? Mark's voice broke through my reverie once more. Are you sure you're all right? You seem different. I took a deep breath, my heart racing. I'm just thinking. I said, my voice barely above a whisper. About everything. Is it about us? He asked, his eyes searching mine. You know you can talk to me, right? I wanted to scream, to tell him everything that was tearing me apart inside. Instead, I forced a smile. I promise I'm fine. Just a lot on my mind, that's all. He nodded, but I could see the doubt in his eyes. I felt like a fraud, lying to the one person who trusted me the most. I stood up, needing to escape, needing to breathe. I think I need some air, I said, rushing out to the porch. Outside, the cool night air hit my face, and I closed my eyes, trying to gather my thoughts. The stars twinkled above, but they felt distant, just like my connection with Mark. My heart raced as I thought about Jake again, the thrill of the secret was intoxicating, but the guilt was a heavy weight on my chest. As I stood there, I almost called Jake. I almost confessed everything to him, but fear held me back. What if Mark found out? What if I lost everything? My hands trembled as I fumbled with my phone, the screen glowing in the darkness. I wanted to reach out, to bridge the gap between desire and responsibility, but I couldn't. I turned back to the house, my heart heavy with unspoken truths. I had not found the strength to confess to Mark, but I knew that this internal battle was just beginning. And I was losing myself in the process. As days passed, I felt like I was walking on a tightrope, balancing my life as a wife and mother with the chaos brewing inside me. My heart raced as I put on a smile for Mark and our child, trying to act like everything was normal. But inside, I was unraveling. Hey, Clara, you okay? Mark asked one evening as we sat down for dinner. I looked up, meeting his gaze. There was concern etched on his face, but I couldn't let him in. Not now. 
Of course, I'm fine, I replied, forcing the corners of my mouth to lift. Just a bit tired from all the renovation work. He nodded, but I could see the doubt in his eyes. Mark always saw through my lies, but I had to keep this one hidden. I couldn't let him know about Jake. As the days went by, I found it harder to ignore the pull I felt towards Jake. He had started texting me more. At first, it was casual, but soon the messages turned flirtatious. I found myself smiling at my phone like a schoolgirl with a crush. One afternoon, my phone buzzed with a new message from him. Hey, beautiful, what are you up to today? My heart skipped a beat. I hesitated, fingers hovering over the screen. I knew I should ignore him, but the thrill of his words was intoxicating. I replied with a simple, not much, just at home. A few moments later, my phone lit up again. Want to chat? I miss our talks. A flutter of excitement raced through me. I could feel the heat rising in my cheeks as I typed back. Sure, I miss them too. But with each message, I felt a weight pressing down on my chest. I was playing a dangerous game, and I was the one holding the cards. Later that evening, Mark returned home, and I could sense his unease. He watched me as I moved around the kitchen, stirring the pasta. Clara, can we talk? He asked, his voice low and serious. I swallowed hard, my pulse quickening. About what? I don't know. You seem different. Is everything okay? I turned to face him, my heart pounding. I'm fine, really. Just a lot on my mind. Are you sure? Because it feels like you're not really here with me. His words cut through the air, and I felt a wave of guilt wash over me. I am here, Mark. I promise, I insisted, trying to sound convincing. But deep down, I was terrified he would uncover the truth. As the evening dragged on, I could feel the tension rising between us. Every time I glanced at my phone, I half expected to see a message from Jake. My heart raced at the thought and I couldn't shake the feeling that I was standing on the edge of an abyss, ready to fall. Just as I was lost in my thoughts, my phone buzzed again. I picked it up, and my breath caught in my throat. It was Jake. Can't stop thinking about you. Let's meet up? A mix of excitement and dread washed over me. My fingers trembled as I typed back, Where? Just a little cafe down the street. It'll be fun. I hesitated, feeling the weight of my choices pressing down on me. I knew I shouldn't go. I should tell him it was a bad idea, but the thrill of his invitation was too much to resist. Okay, I replied, my heart pounding. As I put my phone down, I noticed Mark watching me closely. My stomach twisted with fear. Would he sense something was off? Clara, you're not hiding something from me, are you? He asked his voice laced with concern. I shook my head, desperate to convince him. No, I promise, just trying to keep everything together. But as I looked into his eyes, I felt a pang of regret. I was lying to the person who loved me most. And for what? A fleeting thrill. As I lay in bed that night, I stared at the ceiling, knowing I was teetering on the edge of chaos. Jake was pulling me into a dangerous game, and I was losing control. What would happen next? Would I be able to keep my life intact? Or was I about to tumble into the abyss? I stood in front of the bathroom mirror, staring at my reflection. The dim light made my skin look pale, and the shadows under my eyes told the story of sleepless nights filled with guilt and confusion. I had made a decision that would change everything. I was going to meet Jake again. I convinced myself that I could control the situation, that I could keep my emotions in check. But deep down, I knew I was walking a dangerous path. Clara, are you ready? Mark called from the living room, interrupting my thoughts. His voice was filled with warmth, a reminder of the life we built together. I took a deep breath, plastered on a smile, and stepped out of the bathroom. Just finishing up. I replied, forcing a light tone. I didn't want him to see the storm brewing inside me. 
Mark looked up from his phone, giving me a quick smile. I felt a pang of guilt hit my chest. Do you want to watch a movie tonight? Maybe something light? He asked, his eyes hopeful. Sure, that sounds nice, I said, trying to sound enthusiastic. But my mind was already elsewhere, counting down the minutes until I could slip away to meet Jake. As the evening wore on, I felt the weight of my decision pressing down on me. Mark and I settled on the couch, popcorn in hand. But I couldn't focus on the movie. All I could think about was Jake and the thrill of our last encounter. The tension between us had ignited something I was struggling to control. I glanced at Mark, his laughter filling the room, and felt a rush of guilt wash over me. How could I betray him like this? When the clock struck nine, I excused myself, claiming I needed to run an errand. Mark raised an eyebrow but nodded, trusting me. I felt a mix of freedom and dread as I drove to the cafe where we had agreed to meet. My heart raced with anticipation as I pulled into the parking lot. Jake was already there, leaning against his car, a confident grin on his face. Hey, Clara, he said, his voice smooth and inviting. I'm glad you came. Me too, I replied, trying to sound casual despite the butterflies in my stomach. We walked into the cafe together, and I could feel the tension building between us. I knew this was a mistake, yet I was powerless to turn back. Over cups of coffee, our conversation flowed easily. We laughed and shared stories, and with each passing moment, the air around us seemed to thick with unspoken desires. I could see the way Jake looked at me, his eyes filled with a mixture of admiration and something more dangerous. Clara, I can't help but think about you, he said, leaning closer. My heart raced, and I felt the heat rise in my cheeks. I shouldn't be here, I whispered, but the words felt hollow. Part of me wanted to leave, to run back to the safety of my family, but another part craved the excitement Jake offered. Before I knew it, we were standing outside, the cool night air wrapping around us. Jake stepped closer, and I felt my resolve slipping away. Clara, I can't pretend anymore. There's something between us, he said, his voice low and intense. I know, I admitted, my heart pounding. In that moment, I felt a rush of desire that overwhelmed my better judgment. Jake reached out, brushing his fingers against my arm, igniting a spark that sent shivers down my spine. And then, in a moment that felt both thrilling and terrifying, he kissed me. It was soft at first, but quickly escalated into something more passionate. My mind screamed for me to stop, but my body betrayed me, leaning into him, deepening the kiss. I was lost in the heat of the moment, forgetting everything I had to lose. But as the kiss deepened, a wave of panic crashed over me. I pulled away, breathless and shaken. What have I done? I gasped, my heart racing with fear and regret. The reality of my betrayal hit me hard, and I could feel tears prick at the corners of my eyes. I'm sorry, Clara, Jake said, his voice filled with concern. I didn't mean to push you. I just... I can't help how I feel. I shouldn't have come, I said, my voice trembling. I felt a profound sense of loss as I realized how far I had strayed from the life I had built with Mark. As I drove home, the weight of my actions settled heavily on my shoulders. I could already feel the cracks forming in my world, and I couldn't shake the feeling that everything was about to fall apart. When I walked through the door, Mark was waiting for me, his expression unreadable. Clara, I need to talk to you, he said, a hint of worry in his voice. My heart sank. I knew I was on the brink of exposure, and despair washed over me like a tidal wave. The days dragged on like a thick fog hanging over me. Mark's suspicions grew, and I felt the weight of my guilt pressing down on my chest. Every day, I woke up and put on my mask, pretending everything was fine. But inside, I was a storm. 
My stomach twisted in knots, and I struggled to focus on the little things, like breakfast with my family or helping my child with homework. Mom, are you okay? My daughter Lily asked one morning. Her big brown eyes searched mine for answers. I forced a smile, but it felt like a lie. I'm just a little tired, sweetie. You know how it is. She nodded, but I could see the worry etched on her face. As the days went by, I tried to put distance between Jake and me. I thought if I ignored him long enough, the pull of our connection would fade. But the truth was, it only grew stronger. I found myself staring at my phone, willing it to buzz with a message from him. I wanted to be strong, to turn away from this road I had chosen, but my heart betrayed me. One evening, after a long day, I sat on the couch in our living room, feeling the weight of my decisions press down on me. Mark walked in, his face tired from work. He looked at me, and I could see the concern in his eyes. Clara, you've been distant lately. Is something bothering you? I swallowed hard. The words danced on my tongue, begging to be spoken, but I couldn't bring myself to confess. I'm just stressed, Mark. You know how work has been. He nodded, but I could tell he wasn't convinced. That night, I tossed and turned in bed, my mind racing. I thought about Jake and the moments we shared, how alive I felt with him. But then I thought about Mark and Lily. I loved them both, and yet, I was tearing our lives apart. I could hear Mark's soft breathing next to me, and a wave of guilt washed over me. I couldn't let this continue. A few days later, Jake texted me again. Hey, can we talk? I miss you. My heart raced at the message. Part of me wanted to reply, to feel that thrill again, but another part of me screamed to stop. I stared at the screen, my fingers hovering over the keyboard, torn between desire and responsibility. I took a deep breath and typed back, I can't. We need to stop this. I hit send, but my heart sank as I realized how empty I felt. I wanted to be strong, but the truth was, I was caught in a painful cycle of longing and regret. Later that day, Lily and I were baking cookies together. The sweet smell filled the kitchen, but I couldn't shake the feeling of dread. She giggled as she rolled the dough, and I tried to focus on her laughter but every laugh felt like a reminder of how I was failing her as a mother. Mom, is something wrong? She asked again, her voice softening. I looked at her, and the tears I had been holding back threatened to spill over. No, honey, I'm just thinking too much. That evening, as I tucked Lily into bed, I felt the weight of my choices crushing me. I sat by her side, running my fingers through her hair. You know you can always talk to me, right? She said, her eyes heavy with sleep. I know, sweetie, I whispered, my heart aching. I wanted to be honest with her, but how could I when I couldn't even be honest with myself? As I climbed into bed that night, I felt a sense of desperation. I had to tell Mark the truth. I had to come clean. But as I lay there, staring at the ceiling, fear paralyzed me. What if he couldn't forgive me? What if everything fell apart? The next morning, I woke up with a heavy heart. I looked at Mark as he sipped his coffee, a sense of dread filling my chest. I knew I had to say something, but the words caught in my throat. Deep down, I felt a flicker of hope. Maybe this was the moment for honesty. But I hesitated, caught between fear and the need for truth. Clara? Mark's voice pulled me from my thoughts. Are you all right? You seem so far away. I took a deep breath, feeling the weight of the world on my shoulders. I... I need to talk to you about something important. His expression shifted, concern growing in his eyes. What is it? I opened my mouth to speak, but the words tangled in my mind. I was standing on the edge of a cliff, ready to jump, but terrified of the fall. The day had finally come 
when I could no longer hide from the truth. I could feel the weight of my choices pressing down on me, heavy and suffocating. I sat at the kitchen table, staring at the half-empty cup of coffee in front of me. Mark was in the other room, watching TV, blissfully unaware of the storm brewing inside me. But I knew I couldn't keep this secret any longer. I took a deep breath and stood up. My heart raced as I walked toward the living room. The sound of the television faded away as I approached him. Mark looked up, his eyes filled with curiosity. Clara? Everything okay? I hesitated, searching for the right words. Mark, we need to talk. He turned off the TV, the sudden silence amplifying the tension in the air. What's going on? You look serious. I took another deep breath, my hands trembling slightly. It's about me. About us. I looked into his eyes, searching for some sign of understanding. I've made a terrible mistake. Mark's expression shifted from concern to confusion. What do you mean? What mistake? I swallowed hard, the words feeling like stones in my throat. I've been unfaithful. The confession hung in the air like a thick fog, suffocating and heavy. His face fell, and I watched as a mix of emotions crossed his features. Shock, anger, and hurt. What? Clara, how could you? His voice was low, trembling with disbelief. I didn't mean for it to happen, I whispered, tears welling in my eyes. It was Jake. I didn't plan it. I just... I just got caught up in something I thought I could control. Mark stood up, pacing the room as he tried to process my words. You thought you could control it? You thought it was okay? His voice rose, filled with pain. What about our family? What about me? I know I've hurt you, I said, my voice cracking. I can't change what I did. But I need you to know that this wasn't about you. It was my weakness, my choices. He stopped and faced me, his eyes searching mine for some semblance of truth. Do you even understand what you've done? You've betrayed our trust, Clara. How can I ever look at you the same way? I don't expect you to forgive me right away, I said, tears spilling down my cheeks. I just want to be honest with you. I can't keep lying. I love you, Mark. I love our life and I'm so sorry for putting it all at risk. Mark's expression softened slightly, but the hurt was still there. Do you think saying sorry makes it all better? Do you think I can just forget? No, I don't expect you to forget, I replied, my voice trembling. But I want to work through this. I want to understand why I did it and how we can fix what's broken. I want to fight for us. He looked away, running a hand through his hair in frustration. I don't know if I can do that. I don't know if I can trust you again. I understand, I said, desperation creeping into my voice. But please, can we at least talk about it? I want to hear how you feel, what you need. Mark took a deep breath, his shoulders slumping slightly as he sat back down. I don't even know where to start. I feel so lost right now. I'm lost too, I admitted sitting across from him, but I want to find our way back together. I know it's going to take time, and I'm ready to face the consequences of my actions. We sat in silence, the weight of our conversation hanging between us. I could see the struggle in Mark's eyes, the battle between anger and the love we had built over the years. I don't want to lose you, Clara, he finally said, his voice barely above a whisper. I don't want to lose you either. I'll do whatever it takes to show you that I can be better, I promised, feeling a flicker of hope amidst the despair. As the conversation unfolded, I realized that this was the beginning of something new, a chance to rebuild what had been broken. The road ahead would be difficult, but if we faced it together, perhaps we could find redemption. Share this story if you believe that love can conquer even the toughest challenges. Leave a comment about a moment when honesty changed your relationship and subscribe for more heartfelt stories like this one.